All right, here we go. Genesis 30, 37. Seven. <laughs> Joseph's dream. Jacob lived in the land where his father uh, had, uh, had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man uh, of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and he bought their father, brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. He made a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. Mm. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field. Uh, uh, he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. Verse 8. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream. And what he had said. Uh oh. Yikes. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and the moon and the eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well, his brothers, his father, and his, as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Joseph sold by his brothers. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> now his brothers had gone to graze their, graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel sa said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to them, Go and see if all is well with your brothers with the, and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the field and asked him, What are you looking for? We're in, verse, we're in verse 16 now. 16. He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me uh, where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, Let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now. Excuse me. Let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Reuben, the oldest. Yep. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him, Reuben said this to rescue him from them. To take him, uh, to take him back to his father. As, as a level-headed individual, but realized that his other yeah. brothers weren't, weren't exactly <laughs> on the same page. <laughs> He's got ten brothers against him. Yeah. All right. right. So beginning in verse, um, twenty-three. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty; there was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal. They looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming up, uh, coming from Gilead. The camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, uh, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. I'm so glad they realized that. Yeah, right. His brothers agreed. So when the Midianite merchant came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was not there, he tore his clothes. <clears throat> he went back to his brothers and said, the boy isn't there. Where can I turn now? Then, Joseph's, then they got Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. They took the ornamented robe back to the father and said, we found this. Examine it to see whether it's your son's robe. He recognized it and said, It's my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph has surely been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned for his son many days. All, this, all, all his sons and daughters came to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. No, he said, In mourning I will go down to the grave at, uh, to, to my son. 
So his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites sold Joseph in Egypt to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard. All right. Very interesting stuff here, Very by the way. Very interesting. Okay, so <clears throat> there's a lot of really great uh, lessons to pull from this here, but let me tell you the ones that kind of jump out at me. So, all right, so so now we have, let's just recap everything here. So now we have Jacob. He has moved uh, into Canaan, okay? Um, and uh, in Canaan, he's, he's, his sons are there. Now, Rachel has, uh, has passed, right? Yes. Rachel has passed. Okay. Uh, in childbirth, uh, she actually died giving giving birth to Benjamin, and so now uh, Jacob is with Leah, and now the twelve kids are there as well. Okay, so so now we have the fruition, and now the story starts setting into motion those things that God showed Abraham back <coughs> in the early Genesis um, chapters. God said to Abraham, okay, your people are going to have to go through a very serious time. And it said that in a dream to Abraham, he showed him all these things. And so now we're coming into the fruition of these things because uh, because we're seeing Joseph here. And as, of course, we know, Joseph is sold into slavery into Egypt. And then out of that, out of the, I mean, yeah, sold into slavery into Egypt. And then out of that, the people uh, of God move into Egypt and uh, over a period of time uh, become enslaved by the Egyptians. And okay, so, so we're moving into that period now that God had showed Abraham. Mm -hmm. Let me also mention this. If Jacob had done exactly what, what he was supposed to do <laughs> and follow, follow his brother Esau from the outset, we see that some of these things might not have occurred as they occurred here. Okay, so the the story, the transitional story here, has has been, I think, probably um, there there might have been uh, a little uh, sidestep away from away from what was originally supposed to be. Now there's been a sidestep away from that. Now let's let's say this though that God God takes our plan B and makes it His plan A. All right, so. Um, some people have this view of God's will as a, as a razor's edge, you know, you're walking on a, on a razor's edge and some people have this view of God's will as a playground, you know, as long as you don't play on the, the monkey bars of death, then, you know, you're, you're good to go. So, <laughs> so the idea here is that God is directing Jacob, God's directing this family into the destiny that he has for them as spoken to Abraham, uh, in that dream. God, God is moving them towards that direction. And unfortunately, in this situation, the son's unrighteousness, Jacob's son's unrighteousness, is the step that is taken in order to get to that place. Um, I think there's other ways that they could have gotten into that, uh, but, uh, but God's going to take this opportunity to fulfill what was spoken uh, over Abram. Okay, then let's take a look at the code. He does it in a colorful way. He does it in a way that only God can orchestrate. Exactly. So let's take a look at the, this coat of many colors or this ornate coat. What it basically, the Hebrew word is speaking here of coat of many colors, basically means that this was a coat that was, uh, that was very, uh, that, that there was a lot of energy and a lot of material was used to make this coat. It reached down, when it says ornate, it reached down to his palms and all the way to the soles of his feet. Okay? So I want you to recognize here that when when the English translation of ornate said many colors... It's pretty fashionable now because long cardigans are in style. Exactly. Well, and the idea was that, <laughs> that back really then cool. they didn't have a lot of material. Okay. Right. And there well, was, they had to weave their material. They had to weave. Well, they first they had to to grow it on a sheep, and then they had to 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 take it off and spin it thin, and then they had to weave it, and yeah. so it took a long time. So ultimately, this coat took a lot of material, a lot of time, and a lot of energy. And this just is kind of the archetype over the Joseph being the favored child syndrome. That's happening here. Well, Jacob was also had had a favorite child syndrome going on, so he's passing it on. Right, exactly. Yep, Jacob was the one that was loved by. Uh, let's see, which I, all the women are running together in my mind. Uh, Rebecca, Rebecca favored Jacob, of course, and you know was J uh, Rebecca was always in Jacob's ear. So, so now we have a favored child here in this situation, 
and uh, he's got the long robe that covers him from the sun. Now realize it covers him. His brothers are probably out there wearing what shepherds would usually wear, which was open clothing and 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 very um, you know very sparse clothing. And here's Jacob in his long gown, like a king would have. And so I'm sure that the brothers are looking over there and going, "Look, they took all this time and all this money, and they spent it on Joseph. You know, ultimately money. I'm I'm using that as a as a." idea but they threw their they're through they threw all their attention on joseph and so uh you know uh, J- joseph now i okay i want you to i want you to catch this all right so now jacob if we look in the earlier chapters jacob is the man jacob is the boy who stayed among the tents esau is the boy who went out into the wilderness okay. so now we see joseph is the boy the that favorite. stays among the tents and, and his the brothers other 11. are the ones that are sent out into the field. Right. Okay, so we're getting this passed down now. Jacob is now, he's like, he has christened Joseph as his, you know, he's the one that he says, well, I see a lot of myself in that kid. You know, it's, <laughs> that's, that's the kind of, that's the kind of idea that you get there. So, so there's this, there's this pass down of those things. And ultimately, instead of just one brother like Esau, now, 11 brothers are looking back and saying, we don't like that kid. That kid gets all the attention, and he gets all the love, and we're out here busting our backs. Yeah, absolutely. And that kid gets gets treated way too well. Okay. So, um, so Joseph starts having these dreams, right? And, yeah. uh, and the dreams... Uh, start coming out. Okay, so there were sheaves of. First one was there sheaves of wheat, bowing and they're down. and they're bowing down to Joseph. And so the brothers obviously. Okay, this shows what a good grasp of the people of that time had on visions and dreams and their portents in life. Yeah, I mean, you know, you get what I'm saying. Because they all immediately knew when Joseph said, "Hey, guess what? Th- what kind of dream I had?" They were all like. What? Are you kidding? You think we're going to rule? I mean, you're going to rule us? <laughs> well, you know, of all the brothers, there's usually that one that's kind of dense, you know. <laughs> so, what is that? In every mean? family, there's 11 of them. There's 11 of us. <laughs> so, there, I mean, I'm sure they're going around and going, oh, that's what that means. We really don't like that kid now. So, they're, they're, they've got that question of, so what is it exactly? You think we're all going to bow down to you? Is that what you think is going to happen? Now, realize that they're... They, they have no concept of what's going to happen in the future. They can't see down the line. So, so they just see the bratty little kid among the tents, and ultimately they're getting really upset. It's, it, you know, I mean, there's one of them, and there's, ele- there's one of him, and there's 11 of them, and, uh, and it seems like this kid is getting all the good stuff. So, yeah. And then he has a dream about the, the stars and the sun and the moon. Now, it's important to realize that in most cultures that the sun and the moon is a reference to a, a male dominant and a female dominant uh, uh, identity. So, in other words, uh, in most cultures, the, the, either the sun was the male or the female, and the moon was the, either the male or female counterpart to them. That's how they kind of, you know, because it, there was a lot of, mm-hmm. again, idol worship like we've seen uh, down throughout this. There were lots of pagan practices around them, so they were familiar with the, with the ideal. Iconography mm-hmm. of, of what that would look like. Okay, I, I also want to mention here, and this is, a very, this is a very good thing to learn. Joseph had these dreams. Obviously, God is the one giving these dreams to Joseph. Right. Uh, obviously, he has released in the spiritual realm Joseph to be able to to see into what would be. Um, and, and let me just say this, the, the way that I can equate this to, to what we go through today is firstly that God, uh, God allows us at times to see into um, the promises that he has for us. I know yeah. when I was just beginning to start out in ministry, you know, God allowed me to see some things that... Um, I see some things that were in the future, but that he was promising to me in order right. to draw me into that future. Yeah. But let me let me also say this. I'm not sure Joseph recognized what the outcome of those dreams would be. So I'm not sure he had a full understanding. And I know that the brothers didn't have a full understanding. Well, well, Paul says in 1 Corinthians, we know in part and we prophesy in part. Now, I don't, I don't believe he knew that he was going to go to Egypt. 
Sorry about that notification. I, I keep trying to turn my notifications up. Um, I don't think he also knew that that would mean... Um, uh, don't take my pen. I, I, I am. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't... What was it called? The issue. The land. No rain. No crops. A drought. But dra drought. I'm so sorry. So I also don't think he um, knew that there was going to be a drought to come. I, I don't think he knew otherwise. I... He, he comes off like this braggadocious, self-important teenager at this point. I don't think he would have, even in youthful ardor, I don't think he would have so carelessly shared that if he knew. Yeah, well, he, you know, he may have been a little brat and, and had, but I mean, you got to understand that, that not it's even possible. we understand the fullness of those promises that were spoken over us. And I want to I want to caution you to sharing those things outside of the time that you're supposed to share those things. Yeah. So there are promises that the Lord has given you, or maybe even ideas and plans that the Lord has given you that it may not be time to share with people those things. Remember, Mary Mary got these words from God she about Jesus, them. and she pondered yeah. them in her heart, just like we see Jacob uh, here pondering these things that that his son has said to him well it says that he but he thought on these things in other words his immediate reaction was oh so we're gonna bow down to you too that was the immediate reaction but after I think that the dad knew there was some legitimacy even beyond what joseph knew and i think he said i'm just gonna hold i'm just gonna hold on to these yeah you know i actually have been pretty guilty of um being the bratty Joseph, giving a prophetic word, and then thinking, oh, wow, they didn't receive that the way I intended for them to do to receive it, and and that they don't they they've been put on the defensive now, and so um, well, people aren't ready to hear the outcome of the path that you're going to have to walk to get there. They if you say the dream automatically to to individuals that God has okay. given you or or the plan that you believe that he has for your life, they don't understand the heartache and the trial that you're going to have to go through in order to get there. All that they're seeing is the end result. And maybe all that you're seeing is the end result. Realize that the plans that God has for your life are great and they're powerful, but he's going to give you the grace to walk through the difficulties of life to get to that place. Joseph had a long path to go from Canaan to, to being almost a king of Egypt. Okay. He had a long and difficult path. They didn't see the long and difficult path. All they heard was, nor did he God's got great things for me. Nor did he prophesy the long and difficult path. And oftentimes, the Lord will allow us to believe what, what it is that we want to believe in order for, to <coughs> get us to go with him where he wants us to go. Yeah. Um, you know. And often people that are in the difficulty of that transition will look at the people who, who say, oh, God's got great things for me, and I'm being optimistic. <laughs> and I'm being optimistic, and, and I believe that great things are coming. And they'll look at them and go, I'm hurt. I'm over here in the dirt, and I'm, and I'm scrounging I'm the, around. I'm on the bad end of this deal right. that, that you just prophesied about or that, that you're trying to get through, and, you, you know, you've stiffed me. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, they, and so hurt people do hurt things. Hurt people hurt people. And so right. here's these boys, and they're having to they're having to, to bake in the sun every day, and they're saying, "Yeah, right, Joseph. Yeah, whatever." And Joseph is is sort of Jacob unfairly puts Joseph in this position where he's having to spy on his brothers now. So he's going out and he's spying on his brothers and coming back to tell Jacob just if they're working. So now their younger brother has become their manager, and and so now yeah. now there's the situation where he's saying, "You're going to bow down to me someday," and they're like, "Not." On your life, pal. And yeah. so they concoct an idea. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of this kid. We're not gonna kill him. Reuben says, let's not kill him. Come on, he's our brother. But but the rest of the guys say, all right, well, well let's save him into uh, let's sell him into slav to slavery. <coughs> so now they throw Joseph down a well, and then they take a bloody shirt back to Jacob mm. and lie to him 
So now Jacob. I would freak out. So Jacob's getting bamboozled now. This is the greatest bamboozle of Jacob's life. I don't even think Rachel and Leah's that situation with Laban could prepare him for this because he he goes into deep deep mourning after this situation yes. after he believes that his son has died. Nope. Yep. Yeah. I would freak out. There's no words. And I believe honestly that he believed. Uh, I mean, just 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 thinking about it. I believe that that he believed that Joseph would be the Jacob of his family. I believe that he was he was going to be the one that led his people into the next the next thing. He, which is interesting because Reuben was the first child born. Right. He did though. Yeah. He did. Joseph was that child. Exactly. However, they didn't know. And you know, you were talking about just a minute ago. I think this is important because sometimes we're on um the the side of the dream. Um, we're on the 11 brothers side yeah. as opposed to being on Joseph's side because, you know, let's face it, God does things. Um, not only does God speak to us and do things for us and, and love us, but God loves other people. God speaks to other people and God does things for other people. And sometimes we're on the, the opposite side of Joseph and, you know, they didn't see the jail time that he would serve. They didn't, they didn't see that he would serve in, in Pharaoh's household. They didn't see, you know, that he... Uh, would work hard to get where he got. They didn't. Or even put in a place where either his prophecies <laughs> came true or he was going to die. Right. I mean, <laughs> that, so, imagine living with that because there's, remember he said there, well, we'll get into that later, but but uh, in another chapter, but but yeah. he was put in some pretty tough places. Joseph was put in some pretty tough uh, tough areas, but uh, also, I, yeah, I'm, I want to say that you show your quality by being able to celebrate with others their wins yes. and what God is God is is setting them up to. Right, and I want to say this: don't you know? Just I want to say this. This is really important. I want you to get it out of your mind that God is fair. You know, those the brothers probably thought, well, that's not fair. Right, um, and Joseph may have thought, well, this isn't fair. They threw me into a pit. You know. Um, but fairness, the fairness of God would be that he would abandon us completely in our unrighteousness because God's, God's holy, God's righteous, and we are absolutely the opposite. But on the contrary, God is not fair, God's faithful. And so not only was God faithful to Joseph when he was in Egypt, God was faithful to Joseph when he um, was in jail. God was faithful to Joseph in the situation with Potiphar's wife. God, God was also faithful to, to the 11 brothers, God. Yeah. God provided for them through this, through the whole situation oh. in the way that they needed. It may not have been how they wanted God to, to move. They might have wanted to be the ones on top, but God's not fair. God's always going to be faithful, though. Yeah. Um, God, remember, God is the righteous judge, and uh, he is, he is going to be faithful. Yeah, you know, and uh, it's very interesting to, to see Reuben in this situation. Reuben, the oldest. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting over something. But Reuben, mm -hmm. in, Reuben the oldest, is, the, is uh, the, the firstborn, and therefore the head of, of them. Reuben seeks to save Joseph's life in this moment, even though he has the most to lose in this situation. Yeah, realize that's good. Realize that, that this is the braggadocious kid who's sort of taken his place. And so Reuben has the, has the most skin in this game, but he's the one that seeks to save Joseph instead of, instead of uh, killing That's him. That's good. That's good. Wow. Anyway, so there you go. Um, those are some things that we picked up on and uh, some things that I thought were really interesting in the verse. And we're going to get to see that story of Joseph develop as it goes through. So let's yes. pray. Carrie, you want to play, or you want to yes. pray for us? All right. Lord, I thank you for your mercy and your faithfulness. Yes, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you are not a fair God, but that you are a faithful God. Yeah. Father, I thank you that you don't work things out in accordance with the way I want them to be worked out. Because, Lord, I know they'd be in a mess. Lord, I, I thank you that, that you don't allow me to be in charge, but that you allow me to be part of your plan. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I, I praise you for your righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I praise you that our righteousness is borrowed from you, Father. That we're not measured by our own righteousness. Yeah. But Jesus, that you give us a righteousness that is yours. Thank you, Jesus, that you did what it took to, to dig us out of a pit. 
I praise you, Jesus. Yeah. I praise you, Jesus. Yeah. I praise you, Jesus. Father, thank you that you are continually faithful to us. God, that you're dreaming dreams over us right now. Thank you, Lord, that you're dreaming dreams, that you've got great plans in store for all of my friends who are watching this broadcast right now, that you have set them up to be kings and princes and princesses and queens over areas of their life, that you are continually speaking your favor and your love and your promises to them because they are children of the Most High God, because they are called by your name, Lord, through Jesus Christ. And I thank you, God, that you are continually, that you're pushing them forward, that you are moving them on your path. Now, Father, I pray that they would take those dreams and that that they would store them in their hearts, Lord God, that they would, that they would meditate on those dreams and help, and help them understand the path, Lord God, of humility that they may have to take. Give them the grace to walk the path that they may have to take in order to get to the place that you ultimately have for them, Lord Jesus. Yes, help Lord. them to have the strength help to me, walk Jesus. through the difficulties me, that may be the setting up. Right now, I feel like I have some friends who are watching this broadcast this morning that are in the middle of the jail time, that are in the middle of the slavery time, that they're 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 working hard, that they're that they're in a in a very um, difficult place right now, but you have told them that you have a place for them, a place that, uh, that, that is full of your promise and a place that is full of your provision and that they're getting to that place. God, I pray that you'd give them strength in the valley so that they can stand on top of the mountain, Lord Jesus. Yes. Give them strength in this moment so that they can overcome and yes. conquer the yes. world to get to that place, yes. Lord Jesus, that you have set aside for them, Lord Jesus. The, 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 uh, the psalmist said that you prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. And now, Father, I pray for my friends in this broadcast right now I pray that you yes. would prepare a table in the presence yes, of their Lord. enemies now in the name of yes, Jesus Lord. in the name of yes, Jesus Lord. direct our steps Lord we pray in yeah. your strong and mighty name Lord let us not miss your plan for trying to find it Yeah. Lord I pray that you'd give us great wisdom and great understanding <coughs> to not only guard the dreams and the visions you've given us but Lord great wisdom and great understanding in order to follow you into a place that may not look like what we thought it would look like. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you can make um, you can make anything into um, what you want it to be. Lord, yeah. you can you can use a donkey to speak. Lord, if you can use a donkey to speak, then Lord, you can work out the details of our situation in order to become what it is that you've promised us. Yeah. And Lord, we know that you're good for your word. Your promises are yes. Yeah. And because your promises yeah. are yes, we say amen to your glory. Thank you, Jesus. We respond to amen. Yes, Lord, let it be. Let it be. So Lord, when you speak your promise, let us say, let it be, instead yeah. of let it be this way yeah. or let it be that way. Yeah. So Lord, may we decrease and you, and increase. you increase in the Thank name you, of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, do the work in us you have to, like you did for Joseph in the jail. Do the work you have to in us so that we may be ready to fulfill the promise. Yeah. In Jesus' you, name. In, in Jesus the name of Jesus. Name. The Lord says he is not done with the promises he has given you. Yeah. The Lord says he has only begun. And um, the Lord says, if you write your, write your promises down. Write the promises that he's given down. Yeah. And date them. And pray into those promises and watch the Lord fulfill them. And it may not be in ways. Look for, look for ways. Um, look for the ways he fulfills those promises in unconventional means. Our God's an unconventional God. So um, look for his fulfilling. And in the end, we will all bear a crown.